That's all. Send the search party out from Kevin. Mike Zero, Kilo, Victor Kilo, 73. Hi, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now, I showed this in a previous video quite some time ago. And since then, there's been some major improvements which you guys need to know about. Now, let me first explain what this is. Well, it's Open WebRx Plus. Essentially, it's a web SDR that you can set up yourself to use at home on your local area network or share it with the rest of the world via the internet. Now, it supports a whole host of popular SDRs, such as the RTL SDR, AirSpy, and SDR Play SDR receivers. Now, what we're looking at here is the 40 meter handband, and we're able to do quite a few things here due to the new features that have been added in the Plus version. The actual software is running on a Raspberry Pi 4, and later in the video, I'll show you how to set this up from scratch so you can have your very own web SDR. Throughout each of the handbands, you'll find different modes of modulation, from Morse code to digital modes like FTA, and of course, the usual lower sideband modulation for voice communication. So let's first look at the user interface so we can get familiar where the controls are. Now on the bottom left, we have some stats that show how well or bad the server is performing. On the top row above the waterfall where the frequency is, you'll notice lots of pre-programmed memories. Now these are already built into the software, but you can add your own too. Now each memory saves the frequency and the mode of modulation, and it's also labeled as well. So it's really just as easy as click and listen, or click and decode if it's a digital transmission that needs decoding. Yep, OpenWebRx has built-in decoders for a whole host of different digital data transmissions. Now over on the top right, we have some buttons which show or hide any of the widgets and also the ability to enter the settings page. Now more on that later. The main control on the bottom right is where we change frequency, bands, modulation and decoders if available, and obviously which profile you want to use. The drop down list which selects bands is defined within the profile editing section within settings and we'll take a look at that later. Now let's take a look at some examples of different digital decoders working. But first, let me show you what SDR and antennas I'm using. So here's the Raspberry Pi 4 that I'm using. It does also work with other models of Pi, but I'm using a Pi 4 because I wanted to make sure that I had the best performance available. And my SDR Play RSPDX is connected via USB to the Pi. Antenna B port on the SDR is connected to a tri-band antenna on my roof for VHF and UHF. Now the antenna connected to port A is connected to my NFED half-wave antenna. You can choose which antenna port to use within the profile settings on OpenWebRx. Now this is the NFED half-wave set up as an inverted L. Now this antenna covers from 80 meters up to 10 meters or 3.5 megahertz up to around 29 megahertz. The antenna on the top of the pole here is for VHF and UHF, mainly two meters and 70 centimeters, and it also covers 23 centimeters, which is 1.2 gigahertz. Now the first digital mode that we'll try to decode is ADSB, which allows the tracking of aircraft and plotting aircraft directly onto a map. Now once you start to get decoded packets shown on the pop-out data window on the bottom left, you can click on the map button to open the map. What you'll then start to notice is aircraft icons start to appear and move around the map. The antenna used in this example is the vertical antenna on the roof. Now it's not entirely designed to receive 1.09 gigahertz, but it works enough for this example. So the next digital mode we'll look at is packet radio. In this example, we're looking at a packet transmission on 144.8 megahertz, which here in the UK is the APRS frequency. Now any packets which contain coordinates will be shown on the map along with their appropriate icon which shows which type of station they are. Now these can range from weather stations, moving mobile stations or even repeaters. APRS is mostly used for tracking moving vehicles. Now if you're wondering about where this received data goes, well within settings you can configure the server to send the received and decoded packets to the APRS server. 
OpenWebRx Plus also has the ability to decode and play most of the ham digital voice mode. Now in this example, we're decoding DMR. Notice that the two time slots are shown on the bottom left of the screen, including information about that station that's currently transmitting. Japan, America 2, uh, Tango, Yankee, Sierra, I guess. Well, good morning to you. Good evening to you, by the way. Uh, really, you're really coming to me very loud and clear at the moment from Japan. Uh, I'm located in the southeast of Brazil and South America. The star decoding is also possible, with the person's details shown on screen while they're transmitting. Now, here's what D star sounds like. As well as DMR and D star voice decoding, OpenWebRx Plus also supports NXDN M17, which is the Yaesu Fusion Digital Mode. Now here's what that sounds like while tuned to a fusion repeater a good few miles north of me. <laughs> Go for Victor Lu Lima Zulu. Uh, okay, got got you now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's listenable to. Uh... Now those past examples were using the VHF UHF vertical antenna. So let's try decoding something on HF using my NFID half wave antenna. Now around 7.8 MHz we find weather fax transmissions which are transmitted for reception by vessels out at sea. Now OpenWebRx Plus has a built-in fax decoder and once tuned to a fax transmission and fax selected as a digital mode you'll start to see an image appear decoded before your very eyes. Now while these transmissions take a while to come through fully they provide essential information to vessels that are out at sea out of cell phone or internet range. Now, part of the same topic of transmission is weather reports via the digital mode RITI or RTTY. Again, a RITI decoder is built in and decoded text is displayed on the low left of the screen on the pop out widget. Now, talking of receiving and decoding images, SSTV is also supported, which stands for Slow Scan Television and it's a popular digital mode for hands around the world to share images and photos. Now, popular SSTV frequency is 14.230 MHz on upper sideband. Now, there's normally quite a lot of activity on this frequency during the day, so you'll be sure to catch something nice. Now, SSTV does have a few different modes, but I believe OpenWebRx Plus will automatically switch to which SST mode is being received. For those of you that like FTA, this can also be decoded. Now, if enabled in settings, received decodes can be uploaded to the appropriate servers, like PSK Reporter, for example. Now, along the lines of FTA, we have Whisper or WSPR or Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, and that can also be decoded. Now, what's interesting with Whisper is that it could appear that you're not receiving anything at all but Whisper is designed to decode the most weakest of signals. If we now jump up to the UHF band around 433 MHz, you can use the ISM decoder to decode packets from ISM transmitters. Now the type of transmissions you receive here will be from things like car tire pressure sensors, weather stations, key fobs, and the likes. If you're familiar with the RTL433 application, then this is the same data that's decoded and shown in the widget on the bottom left. Another interesting digital decoder is Pager. Now, if you've ever played around with decoding POXAG, i.e. pages, then it's exactly the same. As this can decode extremely private and sensitive data, I've blurred out the screen, but you can see the extremely strong Pager signals at around 153 MHz. Now VDL2, which is a VHF data link for aircraft, can be found around 136 MHz. Again, a decoder for this can also be found within OpenWebRx+. Information within these data packets can also include coordinates, and if you open up the map while decoding VDL2, any packets which contain coordinates will plot a plane on the map. As you can see on the screen here, there's a few VDL2 channels, so you have a few to choose from. Now, while talking about data links for aircraft, there's also a channel found on HF, 
and the decoder for this is HFDL. With OpenWebRx tuned to around 11 MHz, we find some HFDL transmissions. And with the decoder active and the map open, we can see planes start to plot on the map. Now this time we're seeing aircraft a lot further away, most likely down to HF propagation. Now that we've seen some of the features, let's look at how you set this up. Over on the GitHub page of the OpenWebRx Plus, features found in the Plus version, which are not in the original version, are listed, which there's quite a few of. Now to get started, download the pre-compiled image for the Raspberry Pi. Now once downloaded, you'll need to uncompress the archive so that we can write the image file to an SD card, which will then be later inserted into the Pi. The easiest writing software to use will be the official Raspberry Pi Imager software. You can choose a custom image, plus you're able to pre-configure some settings like SSH username and password. Now you will need to do this as by default SSH is not enabled and there's no admin user created also. So it's important to add this to the Imager software before writing to the SD card. Once the SD card has been imaged, pop it into your Raspberry Pi Make sure to have the pipe plugged into your network and your STR receivers attached to one of the USB ports. Once the Pi is powered on and booted up, you should be able to access the Pi from a browser by typing in OpenWebRx into the address bar. Now, once you get to this page, you can start OpenWebRx. Now, by default, there's three profiles set up one for RTO SDR, one for AirSpy, and one for SDR Play. However, to be able to access the settings page, you need to manually add an admin username and password. Now this is different from the SSH username and password that you set earlier. However, you will need that SSH username and password to be able to access the console of the Pi. Using an application like Putty, connect to the Pi. And once you have terminal access, you'll need to enter this command. Obviously, change the last word of this to the username that you want to use then just enter the password that you want. Now these credentials will be written to a database within OpenWebRx Plus, which will then let you access to the settings tab like this. And once you have access to the settings tab, go ahead and fill out some basic information on the general tab. You will now have to add some profiles under the SDR settings. Now as I'm using an SDR Play device for this example, I'll just remove the RTL STR and AirSpy profiles. You can add these back later if you want to. Now as a side note, you can use more than one SDR with OpenWebRx Plus. On the SDR device tab, you can configure which antenna port to use. So we'll create a profile for using the HF antenna and the other profile for different bands. I'll also add another one to use the other antenna port, which has the VHF antenna on. Now each profile needs a center frequency set along with a sample rate and a starting frequency. You can even change the mode which is selected when that profile has been selected from the drop down list on the main interface. Once you've saved the profiles, you can head back to the main UI screen, select a profile and then start scanning around. A super simple setup. Now I really like OpenWebRx Plus. I think it's an awesome piece of software especially with all those decoders activated as standard. Now for someone who's just starting to get into SDR or even a veteran SDR user, this software makes it super simple to have some fun. This also eliminates the hassle of having third party decoding applications running on your computer and then messing around with virtual audio cables to try and get things working. Okay, it does cost a little extra because you need to purchase a Raspberry Pi but once it's set up and installed, it will just work. As well as using this on your local area network, you can expose the required ports through your router's firewall, meaning you can access this from anywhere in the world with an internet connection and a browser. It also works extremely well on mobile devices and tablets. Now having the option to choose between multiple SDRs, multiple antenna ports means you can link pretty much all of your antennas to this system. Now performance on the Pi 4 has been great with no stuttering or audio dropouts from my testing. Now I'm not sure on performance with older models, but if you want to be sure of great performance, then just try it on the Pi 4. 
As mentioned earlier, you can also expose your OpenWebRx Plus installation to others, which can be viewed on the inbuilt map. Now, there are many others around the world that you can access for free, so go and take a listen to others which have been set up around the world. Anyway, guys, if you use OpenWebRx Plus, then let me know down in the comments. What do you think of this complete solution for listening to SDRs? Personally, I think it's awesome, and that's why I've made a video on it. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.